Welcome to Sports Cars, a podcast where Chicago sports broadcasting pioneer and a national legal expert get into the legal goings of sports. And now your hosts, Chet Kovic and Lester Munson. Sports Court time. How you doing, everybody? I'm Chet Kopic, along with uh, America's premier sports legal analyst, Lester Munson from ESPN. Sports Court, of course, brought you away by the marvelous people. John Coyne, an American taxi, Chicago's premier suburban taxi service. Remember, for comfort, reliability, the fair price, and a courteous driver, you always want American taxi. Lester, I'm going to put you on the spot, uh, which is not unusual. The Ohio State Buckeyes... Uh, because of the improprieties of their head coach, uh, Jim Tressel, who basically looks like uh, a biology teacher from uh, Topeka, Kansas, <laughs> with that uh, vest. Uh, yes. They suspend him two games and find him uh, 250000 bucks for uh, the knowledge he had regarding Terrell Pryor and the five other football players and their dealings with the owner of that tattoo parlor, the memorabilia in exchange for tattoos. <laughs> if you are the NCAA, you have yet to weigh in. What kind of penalty are you going to give Jim Tressel? As I look at it, Chet, uh, what Tressel did is worse than what the players did. Mm-hmm. The players are young men. Did they know the rule? Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. They're on scholarship. The scholarship is never enough. I can see why they would do that. There's absolutely no excuse, however, for Tressel to cover it up and lie about it to his own university so that, to me— his suspension should be longer than the player's suspension. Will the NCAA agree with that? We have to keep in mind that the NCAA is dealing here with the Ohio State University, Mm -hmm. and they may blink before they do what they ought to do. But I'm very disappointed in Trestle. Uh, You've met him. I've met him. I've been enormously impressed with him. Um, His daughter went to the University of Chicago here in town, and I just, it's incomprehensible to me that he would do something this tricky and this stupid. Lester, um, here is what baffles me about the situation. Tressel is obviously a very bright man. If he had taken the uh, route that uh, Lou Holtz took at uh, Arkansas years ago before a bowl game, if he would have suspended prior in the athletes prior to the bowl game and written the bowl game off, people would be deifying him and saying he is all that is right and all that is proper about so-called student-athletes in college football. Instead, the cover-up, as you mentioned to me earlier, is worse than the crime. It is worse than the crime, and, and I think you're absolutely right. If he had taken a hold of it, if he had grabbed it, if he had done something conclusive and definitive, give away a bowl game. Who cares? They're going to get the money anyway. The um, And... And then he'd probably be running for president of the NCAA, although that would be a big reduction in pay from what he's getting as the head coach at Ohio State. Uh, Sean Gale's former uh, girlfriend on trial for the uh, murder of uh, one of Sean Gale's former girlfriends who was carrying his uh, child. There is an item about uh, the casino industry and Sean Gale, which you know all about, which is remarkably interesting. Uh, Here in Illinois, we have casinos that are restricted to boats. Uh, Every now and then, they try to change the law, and there were a group of people who decided they could build a casino in Rosemont, right near O'Hare Field. It would be an ideal location. Rosemont, at the time, was led by some people who had some connections to some other people, let's say. And so they decided to build a casino, and they wanted minority investors. Sean Gale stepped up. He was going to be one of the minority investors. He put a lot of his money in there, I think around $3 million. And like every other investor in that casino, he lost everything. So it was a terrible loss for him. Uh, I think he's been struggling a bit ever since. And now this murder involves a woman with whom he was supposedly uh, working on real estate deals. Mm -hmm. I don't think I... I'm subscribing to that particular no. story. I, I have a tough time uh, buying that one. And he now he's uh, being slandered and libeled and insulted by the lawyers defending uh, the girlfriend. So it's it's another set. It's another real setback for Gail. All right, my friend. Uh, the National Football League, the uh, Players Association, uh, the extension of mediation. Did you see that as being a legitimate step forward or uh, a public relations move on the part of both parties? I think it was a public relations move by both parties, and it was a 
request from the National Football League basically for time to regroup and reconsider. They took a major hit when Judge Doty in Minneapolis told them they're not going to get the lockout money that they had negotiated from the television networks. Mm -hmm. Remember, they made deals. They renegotiated five TV contracts to make sure they would get paid, even though there were no games. Doty uh, decided that that was a violation of the collective bargaining agreement. I have now studied that opinion in some detail. There's a lot of signals in there that the owners, if they understand them, and I know they do, they're, they're not going to like them, but they cannot ignore them. He is telling them, basically in that opinion, that if there is a lockout, he is likely to issue an injunction, a court order that would stop the lockout in its second or third day. They have to know that if they read his opinion. And when they realize that, then they're going to have to reconsider what are they doing here. They planned for three years for this, and now it's falling apart on them. All right. Uh, let's presuppose that uh, Judge Doty has now uh, issued the uh, order determining that uh, the lockout is uh, uh, illegal in its own way. What's the next move on the part of the NFL? The, they are then pretty well stuck. The players have a court order that allows them to play. What the NFL is going to have to do then is, on one hand, negotiate with the players for a new agreement. On the other hand, they're going to have to set up a system for the coming season, the 2011 season, mm -hmm. that will govern the draft, new contracts, player movements, free agency, and salaries for the coming season. Because right now, there's nothing in place for that. This is what we went through. Remember, we had Plan B back mm -hmm. in the early 90s when there was no agreement. The NFL will have to be very careful in what terms it puts down while the players are working without a contract. All of that will end up in court. Uh, but they're going to have to both negotiate and figure out a way to play the season because the lockout will be over. This really fell under the radar. Uh, over the weekend, representatives from the uh, Umpires Union and uh, the MLB Players Association met in Florida. As a matter of fact, uh, new baseball vice president of operations, uh, Joe Torrey, was on board. Uh, why Joe would attend this meeting, I have no idea. But uh, the gist of the meeting was uh, apparently to discuss uh, blown calls by umpires during the playoffs last October. I, I would suggest this. Uh, Lester, isn't it time for the uh, for the Players Association to meet with the Umpires Union and perhaps the commissioner and uh, put the umpires back in a position where they, they don't think they're uh, choose one, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte or Adolf Hitler? It would be nice. Uh, the, the best umpire is the umpire that you never notice. We have some guys now in Major League Baseball. They want to be part of the show. They are histrionic and melodramatic in mm -hmm. making their calls. Uh, they blow a few calls because they're concentrating on themselves and not on the game. Uh, and we did have some historically monumental blunders uh, during the past season. And it, it, it would be interesting if somehow they could get together on this. I, I don't know what you do, though, about the umpire's egos. If they want to be a showman, then the only way to stop him is to fire him and bring another umpire in who wants to play the game uh, wants to umpire the game the way it's supposed to be. It, it is, I think, encouraging that they are meeting. Uh, Bill Vex said years ago regarding uh, umpires, ball players, managers, arguing that, uh, uh, yes, it was part of the act, but also part of the action. If I go to a ball game and uh, see a couple of guys jawing, see an umpire go back and forth with a manager, to me it's... It, it, it is part of the show. It's, it's part of the fabric of Major League Baseball. These days, Lester, with certain umpires, you can't say five words before you get run. No, that's right. Uh, Bobby Cox going out to argue with a manager. That's not a time you're going to leave your seat and go to the men's room. You're going to stay and oh, watch yeah. the argument. I mean, it's part of the, the whole attraction. I have never thought much of replays and, and giving the umpire a chance to reconsider the decision because part of baseball is it moves along at its own pace. There's an argument. The manager loses. You go on. It was a bad call. That's part of baseball. I mean, I, I, I can handle the bad calls. I cannot handle the way the attitude part of it where the umpire immediately ejects the manager or starts, or starts the argument himself. Wind-up question back to Doty. Will players... 
begin organized team activities? Will there be mini camps starting in April? Okay, we're right now in the first half of March. I would think that, yes, players will be at work in April. I think it's going to be under uh, a court order from Doty. I think there's going to be negotiations going on. But, yes, they will be able to work. They will be able to start to begin to prepare for the season. That's a guess, but I think it's a pretty well-informed guess. And this has been Sports Court featuring uh, yours truly, Chet Kapik. And ESPN legal expert Lester Munson brought to you by the marvelous people at American Taxi, Chicago's premier suburban taxi service. Remember, for comfort, reliability, you're always right on target with American Taxi. We'll catch you next time around. So long, everybody.